Welcome to this episode of Door Hardware Nerds. I'm your host, Mia Merrill. Today, we're going to be doing a special interview on design, and I have two guests with me. Can you please introduce yourselves? So my name is uh, Perla Munoz. I am the global head of product design. I'm based in Sweden in our headquarters in Stockholm. And my name is Joe Martone. I'm the senior manager of industrial design for North America. I'm headquartered here in New Haven, Connecticut, um, and I have a, a small team of industrial designers here to help support our efforts. Perfect. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Today, I want to focus on customers and our brands. So how can design benefit our customers? Well, design evoke emotions. So it benefits customers in so many ways, fulfilling their needs. And it's not only about the design, the aesthetics, it's the design as it whole, what a product stands for and how it matches what the customer needs, but also unveil the desires that they don't know yet. That's right. Um, it's probably worth pointing out that when, you, when we ask questions like this, which we do every day, is that our customers include both our end users, the people who actually work with our and touch the products that we make, but they also include distributors and people who are our partners in business. And as we develop these solutions, you know, first and foremost is the user, the end user experience to make sure that it's safe, um, it's, it's dynamic and exciting, it's new, um, but it also needs to be um, a solution that fits the strategic vision of our, of our partners so that they are getting a product that they can be successful in supporting and selling. Yeah, another example could be installers as well. Exactly. That our customers can be the ones that are not using the product directly, but for example, installing the product. And we want to create this great customer experience all the way for all customer types. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So to that end, sometimes with installers, we're thinking about even the design of instructions or packaging that helps it to be um, a, a more efficient process uh, for, for making easy those to installations. Understand. Exactly. Easy to install. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. As well as ease uh, of use or or no instruction to use. Right. Yeah. When possible, it should be intuitive. Yeah. Um, well, mm -hmm. certainly. For end users, we don't want somebody to have to un figure out how to get through a door. You know, they, it should be obvious to them. And um, I think that, you know, we do a very good job at that. But as we look at new technologies and new types of things, we're going to continue to be challenged with, you know, what does it mean? What will that experience be like in the future? Yeah. And then talking about customers, and I have one of my heartfelt topics is accessibility. So this is really something that we think all the way through. And when it comes to accessibility, then the focus will be on customers feeling free to access an environment, to feel free to come in and out. And in this new world, uh, well, when we talk about uh, the pandemic and uh, perhaps customers don't want to interact with products right, in the way them. that we did in the past. So there is this full focus on different topics that are very, very important and that are very customer centric. Yeah, I mean, you know, I heard something a, a few weeks ago, almost everyone will become uh, disabled at some point in their lives as they age. So accessibility is you know, we may not be thinking of it now at our age, yeah. uh, but at some point, it's And I would like important. to highlight also when it comes to accessibility, it could be a person that doesn't have a, a physical impairment. It could be that you are in an environment that you have the impairment of light, and then you still need to access the product. You still need to see it. So impairment can be different things depending on the context. True. Exactly. Um, it's interesting that, you know, as you bring up accessibility for people uh, with disabilities, is that um, so much of uh, door hardware has been around for 
hundreds, if not thousands of years. And it's really only quite recently that we've been trying to address the, that community of people to be able to use these things, um, especially in terms of their everyday convenience, but most importantly is like the ability to exit a building in an emergency situation yes. quickly and safely. Um, and as designers, you know, we oftentimes are looking at how do we create something that is um, visually like familiar with like uh, the history of architecture that, you know, you don't want something that looks like it's uh, for a hospital setting or, or that it, that, that's been made specially for a group of people. We want to create solutions that uh, preserve like, like, an, like a desirable aesthetic but also enables people to that is including yeah inclusive. that inclusive of yeah. everyone's needs and that's that's one of the exciting things about our job is trying to trying to weave that line between um achieving all of those goals yeah. and exceeding them like to the to our ability to make it at not just what we must do but what we can do um yeah. Yeah, but I think that bo both words go hand in hand: accessibility and inclusiveness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they shouldn't be treated separately. All right. So how does design impact our brands? Well, a lot, I would <laughs> say, because our brands are our core, who we are. It's an identity, and of course, we are. We want our products to reflect the brands, regardless of what brand it is. But what the brand stands for. Uh, the image we would like to show, but also how we want to be perceived and do this for real with good design. The relationship that an end user or a distributor as, as one of our customers has with us um, is very important and they should understand who, who we are yes. um, in that relationship. And so we can do that in a number of ways. One is to continually produce products that meet and exceed their expectations in their everyday experience. But by uh, providing consistent use of our brands in the packaging and the communication um, when possible on the product itself, it helps to connect that positive experience with a consistent brand appearance so that you know, if whether it's Yale or Corbin Russman, Sargent or Ross Abloy, any of our many brands, it, it forges a deeper um, trust yeah. between that end user and us uh, moving forward. So and that's very important. In treating this uh, as designers uh, and working in teams, treating this with respect, it means that we create that consistency, but also that we can actually deliver something that we can stand for, something that is sustainable. I frequently uh, use the word storytelling when it comes with this. And, and I feel that a brand is integral in storytelling. That, you know, why should I buy this new product? Well, just simply outlining that this handle allows for this much leverage or it has, you know, good features for unlocking. That's that's one portion of the story, but really around that story is that like we, as a, as a brand, have been providing these solutions and will continue to be providing these solutions. You can count on us, you know, to do that. We know that part of our legacy is to, is to deliver these things consistently at, at the highest levels. All right, well. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you, having Mia. us here. Yeah, that was very good. If you want to see examples of design, I will put a link below for the Good Design Studio. I'm also going to include links for Asa Aboy Global, as well as some Asa Aboy local sites and some industrial design links if you want to learn more, if you're curious about what you've heard today. Thanks for watching.